Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Leo Hose, and our guest is David Murray. He's the founder of Maria Voltortis Readers Group. Welcome. Thank you, Geraldine. Yep. Um, you've been in our show before, and it's mm. great to have you back. Thank you. Um, um, you shared a, bit, a little bit about your faith story. For those who ha don't know about you, it'd be great to hear a little bit of it. Well, I was a lapsed Catholic. Uh -huh. <laughs> And uh, I went to Medjugorje and something pretty spectacular. Medjugorje is a town, a pilgrimage place in Yugoslavia, uh -huh. where a lot of um, a lot of things happen. People go there for all, like Lords or Fatima, and it's a more of a modern day meeting place, gathering place for people from all over the world. And I went there as a pure skeptic, ah. and uh, and a holiday too. I heard a holiday. I needed a break. <laughs> And something happened, and I won't go into what, exactly what happened, but I, I think I, I got changed there. Yes. And uh, and I, love sort of struck you, oh, didn't it? Oh, and I couldn't get over what happened. And when I came back from there to Australia, people were amazed that the changes come had come over me. Oh wow! What sort of changes? Well, one of the things that happened was that half of the people in the group that I was with were reading these writings of Maria Valtorta and she wrote extensively. She from a from a bed she was a paraplegic and sitting up all these years and she had visions and dictations from Jesus and Mary and others about the lives of Jesus and Mary from before Mary was born to after her assumption. Wow. But in so much detail, and there were books and books and books of them, and I was reading these books, and I read them again, and I thought to myself, this is pure Bible. Mm. I wonder has anybody ever done any comparison or an index of the pa passages from the Bible that relate to what was revealed to Maria Valtorta. Mm. She was an Italian and I guess they call her a mystic. And I started cross-referencing all these passages, not only from the New Testament, but from the Old Testament, which mm. Jesus, Jesus lived the Old Testament, didn't he? Yes. And, uh, and I found over a number of years while I was doing this, and I'll go back to that later, that 98.5% of the passages in the four Gospels that relate to the writings of Marie, of of the lives of Jesus and Mary were actually witnessed by Maria Valtorta mm. in her visions mm. and dictation. Yes, that's wonderful that such a high percentage because oh. even when anyone gives a talk, it, you know, it's very hard to speak 100% proof. Yes. I mean, I uh, yes. remember listening to a very uh, popular priest and he said that often when people give a talk, it it cannot be always 100%. And he said, it's good if it's 70%, you know, yeah. fully, you know, foolproof. Because yeah. um, we, the main thing this priest was saying, which I think he would agree, is that it's bringing people closer to Jesus. Yeah. And I know uh, that yeah. through this group that you're running, that um, yeah. I know three members, and they have come closer to Jesus yeah. through these readings, haven't they? Yeah. Well, the extraordinary thing, I found no contradiction Oh. between what was in the Bible mm. and what was Maria Valtorta's. Not one contradiction. Oh, and amazing. And uh, I started a group mm. in, and, and I got started giving talks in different places. Mm. And then I went to different countries around the world because there are lots of people in different countries and in not only in English-speaking countries but in other languages as well who read Maria Valtorta's writings. And uh, I also started thinking about themes. And uh, the first theme that I thought about, there must be passages that relate to women and mothers. Mm. So I collected and isolated a number of passages about women and mothers and put them on a little booklet. And that was the first 
of about 70 little booklets oh, on no. different themes that I have collected and put together over the years. There was one, we were talking about one on forgiving in the last talk that we had, mm. and so much is important about forgiving yes. and not judging mm. because the judging gets in the way uh -huh. of forgiveness while I'm judging. Yes. And then I did another one on Mary Magdalene. Oh, oh her story. Oh, boy. Yes. <laughs> her story would be, oh, it would be a classic film. Oh, boy, because she was a, wow, she was some woman and then something happened. Yeah. And for it, the first time in life she found a man, or Jesus, mm. that wasn't influenced by her enticements or anything, and yes. that rocked her. Yes, How can she couldn't I handle? control. She couldn't. Yes. Mm. How could I handle this man? I'm not, I have not, what I do has no effect. He's not interested in what I do. He's mm. more interested in who I am. Mm. That's and, beautiful. And then she became... Make the greatest, apart from Mary and Jesus, the greatest disciple, mm. just about, because she was the one that announced the resurrection. Wasn't really? She? Wow. Yes. And then there was another one on um, Joseph, mm -hmm. <gasps> the story of Joseph, that's Mary's betrothed, who, mm. and his love for Jesus, and right through to his death. And even Maria had a vision of how he died in the arms of Jesus with Mary standing by his side. Mm. Uh, another one was love and pain. Yes. And what saint did not suffer? What yes. saint in the history of the churches did not suffer? Yes. Uh, love and pain um, and lots of other themes. Yes, and, and on, what? even... Um, the saints as in us brothers and sisters in Christ we are like the saint with the the smaller mm. uh, you know that we are followers of Jesus mm. you know there's not many people who really follow want to follow God that have a pain-free life do mm. they mm. yes well there was a lot of other passages that relate yeah. to the journeys of St. Paul mm. yes St. Paul's a fantastic follower mm. but on that note we'll go for a break okay mm -hmm. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is David Murray. He's the founder of Maria Voltorta's Readers Group. Welcome back, David. Thank you, Geraldine. Um, you've done booklets on mm. Maria Voltorta's um, reflections. Mm. I think I might have mentioned the first, uh, there was a theme about women and womanhood itself and mothers. Mm -hmm. And I thought there must be, there are lots of passages that Maria wrote about on that theme. So I collected some of the best passages I could and produced a little booklet on women and mothers. Yes. And somebody said, gee, that was great, David. Would you do another one on something or other? Anyway, different themes began mm. to come to my mind. And in her readings, um, in her reflections mm -hmm. and visions, mm -hmm. they were very exact to Ooh, the scriptures, yeah. isn't it? Mm. Which makes it was us... like she was there. Mm. She was there. And uh, one of the my favourite uh, collection is on Mary Magdalene. Wow, what a woman she was. Mm. Oh, boy. And she was... Uh, she saw Jesus and thought, wow, he, what a man. And she tried to display her charms and he wasn't the least bit, least bit interested and this threw her, so she was startled, and so much so that she began to be interested in what he was on about, and she had an extraordinary conversion, and she became one of the strongest of, Jesus, of the women disciples who connected with Jesus and went with him on his travels. And uh, matter of fact, she was the one who announced the resurrection. Mm. Why didn't... That announcement but wasn't that been given by one of the apostles or somebody, but mm. she was the one. And uh, 
boy. That's powerful because it's, oh, um, yeah. in a sense, we um, human beings, we, we can get very tempted to people please mm. and to, uh, you know, um, and when Jesus didn't people please her or mm. let her, him be manipulated by mm. her, that truth and him mm -hmm. knowing her because he was God mm -hmm. transformed her. Which, and she had to cope with that. Oh mm, my gosh. Which so, would have been painful, but <laughs> I mean, it's a challenge to us today because so many people will give the excuse, you know, Satan made me do it or my, uh, I had to do it for my friends or my family because they put pressure on me. Yeah. I had to, inverted commas, love them. But as yeah. you said, true love is well, she was, she was deeper she for was the good. The, she was like the rock star yes. of those times. And, it, and, and there was another one on love and pain, love and pain. Mm. So much. What saint did not suffer? Mm. And I've been blessed by not having much suffering in my life. But, but by gosh, I've had a lot of challenges in my life. But some of the people who suffer the most Mm. have learnt the most and have become, oh, have the story. And, and, and it's also, it's so good to know that how can I understand somebody unless I've been where they have been, like mm. somebody who's, um, uh, I've never, you wear somebody's moccasins unless you wore his moccasins, how can mm. you know what it is like? And how could I know, understand what it is like to have had an alcoholic problem if I've never had it myself? So it, it helps me with my listening mm. to step back and not right. judge. Yes, so you're not saying to go the same road as the no. person, but, but a really listen. And, to be there. Yes, to and, have empathy, to feel yes, for them. Yes, yes, yes. And how do I know? And I learned, one of the things that I learned most I try. Well, I, I fell into the trap of telling everybody, "Oh, you got to read these writings." And mm. and the more I said that, the more I did that, the more they backed away. And then I, I thought of an idea. I am more influenced by how you live your life and what you believe in, rather than how you want me to live my life, or what you want me to believe in. So putting myself in that other person's position, all I, can, all I can do is just show them how I live my life mm. and what I do. And that has more impact than on what I'm trying to get them to believe. And then mm. they'll get interested, perhaps, mm. in what triggers me in all the things that I find. Mm. And there's another booklet on Joseph, The mm. Life of Joseph. Yes. And, ah, uh, oh, there's so many... So many booklets, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I, there's about 70 different themes and 70 little booklets that I've made. But each was to help me understand this particular passage, this particular theme, this particular person, mm. how it affected their yes. lives. So what you're saying is in her, in her readings, they not only... Um, expand on the details of, mm. of, of scenes in the Bible, mm. but she also gives a teaching as part of mm. her readings. Is mm. that true? Mm. 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 That's fantastic. Mm. And what are the names of her readings? Is it the poem of the man God? Is that it the... ca was called the poem of the oh, man God. It was God. called it. And it was in five very thick 800-page uh -huh. uh, volumes. Uh -huh. But there's been another a re publishing of it in uh -huh. 10 volumes, uh -huh. 10 smaller volumes uh -huh. called uh, The Gospel as Revealed to Me, mean uh -huh. very, mean, meaning very... Ma ma Maria Voltaire. <laughs> Maria Voltaire. Ah, so that's the new... Um, that's the new edition. That, oh, so you can buy those you books? You can buy those books, oh, yes. That's great. Just get onto the web website and uh, yes. you can contact the books, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, uh, you've got me interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you are. Yes. I'm not trying to convince you, but, but just by telling you my story, how it's affected me, rather than me wanting to change you or to convince you, just my story. Yes, rather just by than being. My, my effort to change you. I don't want to change you. You're the expert on your life, not me. <laughs> well, that's trusting in God's power, isn't it? Is. It is, yes. 
yes. rather than trying too hard. We yes. sometimes strive yes. too hard on our own yes. strength. I've got a lot older since I started and now I've passed the buck to a lady I know her name oh. is Catherine Loft. Yeah, before we talk more about Catherine Loft, we'll yes. go off for a break. Okay, yes. You've been watching Spirit of Life. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is David Murray. He's the founder of the Maria Valtotas Readers Group. Welcome back, David. Thank you, Geraldine. Uh, now, you were talking about how you've, um, you used to lead the Maria mm. Valtotas Group, and now you've lef left it to Catherine Loff. She's mm. leading it. Well, I was thinking, I've been chasing her for ages and saying, Catherine, you ought to take over this job. And no, she said, no, no, no. And I thought to myself, well, I'll give her a choice. Uh, let's say one day I get hit, a, hit by a bus and then it'll be landed in her lap and she won't know where to start. Or I could say, I'll hand it over to you gently, little by little. And she looked at me, I put it to her, and she said, I'll take the second option. <laughs> and she <laughs> That's was a hooked. great idea. So that's happened. Over a period of time, I passed the management of this reader's group so to Catherine. Gradually Locke. you've been doing that. And then I, was, I had all this extra time because I'm 87 years old or 84 years old at that time. And I've got the rest of my life, God knows, I might get hit by a bus. But if I don't, what could I do? But I had started... I have a voice. I used to sing along a lot oh. with my family and everything. And I have, uh, I, I used to sing, and I had started to sing to some nursing homes as a, mm. because I know all the old songs. Yes. <laughs> anyway, that started to grow and grow. And uh, over a period of years, right up until now, I sing at a number of nursing homes. And I just love it because I just, because I share my joy of music mm. and sometimes hearing and music is the last things to go with people who are in advanced years. Mm. And I also I often play with the words of songs. I try to introduce a couple of spiritual songs into, the, mm. into, the, uh, into what I sing. And one of the songs that I love is um, The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face. Uh -huh. It's a love song. Yes. And I love that song, but then it occurred to me, the face of the Lord. Mm. If I die, one of the first things I hope to see is the face of the Lord. Uh -huh. And then I looked at the words of the song, and I have the words here, and I looked at every verse. Then I changed the words of the first line of the second verse, Mm -hmm. And then the first line of the third verse. I see. From the first line of the second verse, it says, the first time ever I kissed your lips. Mm. Now, with Jesus there, I changed that to the first line ever you touched my cheek. Mm. Then the first line of the third verse was the first time ever I lay with you. And I changed that line to the first time ever you held me close. Oh, that's beautiful. Then the words of this song, uh -huh. they took on a different dimension. Wow. It was like suddenly the words of those verses expanded in meaning by a thousand. But mm. it took, I'll tell you what, we haven't got the backing track here. How about I sing you this song? Oh, that would be beautiful. Without Please a backing do. track. Yes. That'd Just be beautiful. as I've changed yeah, it. Yeah, no, great. Is that okay? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. You're very creative. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done this before. I'll try and get it. Here we go. The first time ever I saw your face. 
I thought the sun rose in your eyes And the moon and the stars were the gifts you gave To the dark and the endless skies The first time Ever you touched my cheek I felt the earth move in your hand Like the trembling heart of a captive bird That was there at your command and the first time ever you held me close I felt your heart so close to mine And I knew my joy would fill the earth and last Till the end of time The first time Ever I saw Your face Your face Your face Oh, wow, that's beautiful. That's very inspirational. Oh. Yeah, you're right. It really, it really hits to your heart, hits to your home. I want and, that as my going out song. <laughs> oh, I remember that. I'll tell Patrick. <laughs> I, Patrick, who's your close friend. Oh, Thank dear. you so much. And that was beautiful. And, it, you know, that, um, and I think that it really, um, yeah, it's a, a, a real great, great gift. And, and what have you found with the people in the nursing home? What, what is their well, feedback? Well, I get different reactions. But mm. my gosh, so when I'm feeling that, oh, they don't, I don't, they don't get it, I'm not doing much good at these voices, they might be very, very old. And whenever I get that feeling, almost inevitably, somebody will come up to the, the end of the session and say, thank you so much. Yes. So without realising it, I've triggered something out yes. with them, yes. even though I might not be aware of it myself. Yes. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm. I think God always works, isn't it? And um, yeah, thank you so much for coming on our show. But mm -hmm. for those people who would like to join the Val mm -hmm. Maria Valtorta's group, what do, what website do they go on? It's valtorta.org.au. Wow. Well, all the best and God bless you and keep up the good work of singing at the nursing homes. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay tuned next week. Goodbye and God bless you.